My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, I really just wanted to talk through a fan. It's almost summertime, and for many of us, that means spring and summer camping season is in effect. Now, I know that there are a lot of people out there who don't like summer camping. It gets really unbearable, super hot in some areas, like over 100 degrees. Moab, anyone? But for the rest of us who live in a state like Florida and want to take advantage of camping in our area, well, it's hot here like 75% of the year, but that shouldn't deter us from going camping. We just have to find a way to keep cool. Now, you know what I think is an injustice? If you were to go online and search for ways to keep warm during fall and winter camping, you will get hit with a barrage of different items. I mean, you got everything from down blankets to quilts to sub-zero sleeping bags to tent liners to buddy heaters. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. But if you were to go search for how to keep cool during spring and summer camping, well, there's not that much. I mean, you got stuff like fans and you maybe have like AC units like the Zero Breeze that I got back there, which I can't wait to try out. But other than that, there's really not that much. So today I'm gonna to share with you two items that were sent to me by a company called Set Power, which I am hoping will cure your overheating woes. All right, so first up, the fan. Now, when they told me they were gonna send me a fan, I was like, all right, send it. But I really wasn't that amped up about it. We have like four or five over here. And the reason why is because our fans are so small that you sometimes need like two or three just to cool down a tent. Or we'll go camping, I'll forget to bring a fan, and then we end up going to the nearest Walmart to grab a fan because it's so hot. And before I knew it, I had a ton of them sitting in the house. See, the problem I have with my fans is that they're AC powered, which means that I have to plug them into a socket. And unfortunately, the Jackery I have, which is a Jackery, 240 it's just not powerful enough to power any of my fans so unless I'm staying at a campsite that has electrical then my fans are basically unusable and even if we did have electric I still have to run an extension cord all the way up to my rooftop tent just to be able to power any of my fans and that's when I usually bring out one of these this is the reel that I have that allows me to just plug in two or three different things at the same time and yeah this can get really annoying bringing this around and bringing it all the way up to a rooftop tent. So I started looking into different options because I have to be able to stay cool during the summer and when you're overlanding, there is definitely not gonna be any electric. So I started thinking, okay, dual battery system, a bigger jackery maybe, all just to be able to power some fans. So I started looking into cordless options. Are there fans out there that are cordless? And yes, there are. Matter of fact, you can try to get one of those construction site fans, the kind that the construction guys use because those work really well. I have a friend of mine who has the DeWalt one. Only problem is they can get a little pricey. They're like 150 bucks, not counting the batteries. You have to get like the big, like batteries that you normally would power drills and stuff with just to power that fan and they're also not very big They're about the same size as the fans. I already have now if you really wanted to get fancy You can get one of those zero breezes that I have back there, but those zero breezes They're like eight hundred dollars and you have to plug that in as well You can go cordless and buy their battery but a zero breeze battery costs just about as much as the unit itself. It's about seven to eight hundred dollars also. And the runtime on those batteries is only about five hours. So you're only gonna get about five hours of air conditioning in your tent. So enter Set Power's Smart Tail Fan. Like I said, I really wasn't that amp when they said they were gonna send this to me until I pulled it out of the box because I looked at it and said, oh. This basically crosses off every one of my needs and everything that I've been looking for in a fan. Number one, the size. I mean, just my face, look. It's way bigger than those little rinky dink fans that you're gonna buy at Walmart. Much, much bigger. Matter of fact, it's also bigger than those construction site fans as well. So this is gonna be one of these is gonna be able to power the tent without me having to put two or three all over. This is gonna give me a ton of cool air but also it's not very wide it has a very thin profile which means that if you need to pack this somewhere you're not bringing a humongous fan that's going to take up a lot of room this does not take up a lot of room at all I'll be able to just slide this into my rig somewhere and be able to use this number two power 
This thing, I don't have to bring a bunch of different batteries with me. For example, if I were to get the DeWalt construction site one, then I would have to bring a bunch of these different batteries with me. These are the batteries that you use to power up your power tools. And not only bring these, but I would have to bring the thicker versions of these just to get a ton of juice in order to keep that DeWalt fan going. And with the Zero Breeze, well, I already told you, a battery for the Zero Breeze is about seven to eight hundred dollars and it lasts for five hours. So you're gonna do bring three of them. That's about twenty-four hundred dollars in just batteries, which you could have probably put on a dual battery system or a bigger jackery. I mean that's just that would not make a lot of sense. Now this thing, your entire power unit is right here. No external batteries, it's already built in. You do get a charger, so all you gotta do is when you're at home. Plug this up, get it charged up, and you're good. And what's even better is that when this thing runs out of camp, then you could just use your Jackery, no matter what Jackery you have, or even like a power bank, I'm hoping, to just recharge the battery because you're not using the Jackery or your mini power bank to power the motor. You're just using it to recharge the battery that's already in here. I don't know how much it's gonna take from my Jackery to get this back to full capacity. I will test that out on the field. Hopefully it'll charge it enough times that for the rest of my trip, I will constantly have power in this thing and keep it going. Now, as far as the build, fully metal. Like even the rim around it is metal and I thought it was gonna be plastic, which is great because it's a lot more robust than those rinky dink plastic ones that I have. So you know that this thing is gonna take a beating. But even if it's all metal, it's really super light. Like because it's aluminum, like I can carry it with one hand. On the sides you have these two knobs that will just allow you to basically control the angle of it and you can move it and tighten it and it won't go anywhere. And as far as controls, it's simple. Over here you have one knob and you basically have your off position and of course as you turn it more then it starts to get more powerful. Up here they have a LED indicator. You see battery right there and then you have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So once you have this thing fully charged up, it'll be at 100%. As of right now, it's telling me that I have 40% of power left in this. Awesome, awesome thing. So it'll tell you just how much more power you have and you can go get it charged up. Okay, so let's do a test to see how powerful this thing really is. So here we are. Nice cool little breeze, kind of blowing it a little bit. Going up a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. I'm only halfway. I mean, I'm freezing right now. It's pretty cold. Big enough and powerful enough that I can take this anywhere without having to plug it in. If they didn't send this to me and I knew about this product, I probably would buy it. Next is the fridge. I'm pretty sure this is the thing that you guys have been sticking around to see. I am super excited to have another fridge. I have a fridge already, but currently we've been using that fridge for both vehicles and I've been transferring it back and forth. But now that I have a second fridge, I can now keep one fridge in each vehicle and I don't have to worry about transferring it around. Plus this one has a couple of features that I think are really cool that my existing fridge does not have. I love the color scheme on this one, black with a white top. I think it looks really nice. The only thing I'm not such a big fan of is their logo and you know me, I'm like a logo branding kind of guy. It's not ugly, it's just not my kind of style and it doesn't really matter. It's a freaking logo. As far as construction, really nice. When I got this, everything was pretty much already kind of installed on it. With my existing fridge, I had to put in the handles and screw them in, which is fine. But when I got this, this already had these handles built in. And these handles are actually kind of the same one that I have already. Like it, there's a lot of tension on it. So it will definitely just come right back. There isn't one 
on the other side though. So they went and forego the handles on the other side, which is why you have these plugs here. They forego the handle here because you have this other handle here. This is something I don't have in my current fridge right now. And what's cool about this is if you put this in the slide, then you can just grab this and pull it. So that I think is a really cool feature. Also, it's kind of, it has this leather or could be pleather wrap on it. So it's really soft, really nice. I just don't know if, if this is not real leather then, and it's imitation leather, then after a while, the heat and humidity and all that stuff, this will start to peel because I have a ton of stuff that had the same kind of uh, uh, wrap on it. And after a while, it just starts to peel on you. So we will see how long this lasts. But as of right now, it looks really nice and has a really nice soft grip on it. Right now, I have this thing opening this way. By the way, I really like this latch. Long latch, stays on really well and it clasps really well as well. Now here's the really cool feature about this. You can pop this open. The top comes off. Now, why does the top come off? Because depending on how you have your fridge set up in your vehicle or how you want to set it up in your vehicle, you can move it to the other side. So now you can have it open this way. If I had this in the Jeep instead and it was in the rear seat, then during our road trips, I can have it opening one way so that we can reach it from inside the vehicle. And then when we get to camp, I just have to flip the lid around and now it can open from the outside so that we can pull stuff out and cook. That is a really cool feature that I wish my fridge had. Control panel is pretty much your standard control panel that you will see with almost every fridge. The only difference between this one and mine is that this has dual zones. So right now mine is one zone and you can turn my fridge into either a fridge or a freezer. This has both fridge and freezer or you can make the entire thing a fridge if you don't need the freezer option of it. So you can control both zones over here. They have it marked as to which zone it belongs to. You have your power button, then you have your max and eco button. So you can put it on max to get it going. And then once you're at camp and it's already cooled down to what it is you need it to be cooled down to, then you can go ahead and switch to eco so that it's not draining too much power. And then on each side, you have your plus and minus, and that's how you just set the temperature. Normally for a fridge, you would have it somewhere around 35, 37 degrees. And then over on the freezer side, then you would just put that down to like zero. That's what I love about both these fridges that I have is that they're easy. There's not a lot of fumbling going on. I mean, there's a lot of people that have fridges with Bluetooth and all this other crazy stuff. I just, I just need to cool my food and I don't really need to sit there and monitor it. I can just go and look, right? So that just makes things a lot easier and I don't have to fumble with Bluetooth and an app and all that good stuff, which are great features. I just want to keep this as simple as I possibly can. So here are your dual zones. You have your freezer on this side and then you have your fridge on that side. This basket, fits in either the freezer or you can bring it over to the fridge. If you wanted to turn this whole thing into a fridge, I believe, yep, that can come out. So if you wanted to turn this whole thing into just one big fridge, go ahead and do so. But if you want to split it into a freezer, then this can just go right back where you got it. So that's a really cool feature. You'll be able to divide this the way you like. Here's another feature about this that I don't have in my fridge that I wish all fridges like it was standard. Do you see that? You know what that is? That's a drain plug. Like <laughs> I don't know how many times my fridge something had spilled and then I have to go in there and then take the fridge out and dump it. Like how come there's not a drain plug in there? This one has one. So if something spills, I just open up this drain plug let it drain down at the bottom, good to go, clean it. So that is, I think, probably my favorite feature out of this whole thing. They do give you handles. So if you wanted to remove this long bar and you don't need something to pull and you just want two handles instead, they do provide you with the handles here and that can easily just get plugged right in. We got some, it looks like wrenches, hardware. I know what this is for 
and I will show you what this is in a bit. And then you got your 12 volt uh, uh, cigarette lighter type of socket plug here along with instructions. This may not be for everyone, but it might be for some of you. One, two, Huh? You see it? Wheels. Now I know this is not for everyone because you might want to permanently mount your fridge in the vehicle. Leave it that way, you can do so. However, for the rest of you who don't want to do a permanent mounting solution, you can add the wheels to this because what makes that pretty cool is that you can leave this in the vehicle, get it cooled down, and then let's say you get to the beach or you want to go down and go fishing or whatever and bring your fridge with you and you can't necessarily bring your vehicle over there well this thing here can extend out and you can now just tow this along bring it over to the dock or bring it over to your fishing boat or whatever this just gives you a lot more portability you can keep it mounted permanently in the vehicle just like a lot of overlanders do or you can just put this in your rear cargo area charge it up get it cooled down and then you can take it wherever you want when you get there so if you're overlanding and you don't want to keep the fridge in the vehicle you can also just bring it over to wherever you have your kitchen set up or if you're going camping or whatever having wheels just gives you the option to do that now the way the frame mounts to this thing you get a couple of bolts to put underneath they give you your regular standard you know bolt that has a hex socket at the end of it right with a washer but you also get the kind that has um, the little kind of handle turn thing. So that way, if you don't want to keep this on permanently, you can use this to get this thing screwed in and get it all tight. Or if you just want to keep it temporarily, then use this so that you don't have to pull out a tool every time. You can just unscrew it and remove the bottom. Same thing goes with the legs down here. These just unscrew really easily just grab it and unscrew it so anytime you want to just bring the wheels and the cart with you and leave it in the vehicle and then when you want to convert this to something that rolls you can easily do so and if you don't want to if you want to keep it permanently with the wheels on then just use these and you're good to go all right let's talk specs when it comes to this fridge you have two sizes available to you you have the 45 quart and the 60 quart hence the name the rv 45d pro external dimensions 25.4 by 16.7 by 17.3 inches or 645 by 425 by 440 millimeters the capacity is 45 quarts or 43 liters Net weight is 38 pounds or 17.2 kilograms. The rated power consumption is 60 watt. The temperature range is, goes from negative 18 Celsius to plus 10 C Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what kind of compressor they have in here. When I was buying my fridge before, that was the one thing that they boasted about is the compressor that's in the one that I have is supposed to be one of the best that you can get in the market. But I checked everywhere on set power on what kind of compressor this has and it didn't mention it anywhere. It just says really, really tough compressor and long lasting. What that means or how you want to take that, no idea. I hope it does last because having a fridge is always awesome. So I hope this lasts for a while. I will let you know in the future. I mean, again, I won't really know that until we get going with this thing. the fridge and the fan both by set power now this is not gonna be the end all final video I do of these products you will see these pop up in future videos as I'm using them on the field I will actually also do separate reviews on both of them letting you know how they're working when it when we're out there and overlanding and camping so you will see this again and again this was just more of a introduction to the products the set power has that will help keep you cool 
this summer. But that's it. I hope this review helped. If you've been eyeing these products for a while now, I hope that the information that I gave you is enough for you to make your decision. Or if you've never heard of Set Power before, well, now I've given you another kind of product to look into and see if it actually fits your needs. But that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Hey, really quick before you go, because I think I need to bring this up. So I was over here shooting B-roll of the fridge, right? And this is their electrical setup. This basically gets plugged into the fridge and then this part gets plugged into the 12 volt socket of your vehicle. And then when you wanna charge it with an AC port, then you just plug it into the 12 volt socket that they provide for you. So I had it plugged up like this. I had this plugged into a wall in the garage. This was on the floor. This was all on the floor except for this going up to the fridge. What was happening was I would hit this area right here with my foot once in a while, just lightly hit it and every time I did, the fridge would flicker and turn off. Now, I don't know if that's just because I didn't have it clicked in all the way, or if this connection is actually loose that it's gonna be concerning later. We like to hit the trails, and if we're hitting the trail and this keeps getting knocked around and it's shutting off the fridge, that's gonna be a problem. So I have to keep an eye on that to see if that continues to persist. If this is just what's loose, this thing right here, well, that's not really that concerning to me either because this basically stays in the house. It's not gonna get plugged into the vehicle. This is what gets plugged into the vehicle. Still, I thought I'd bring that up.